Welcome to the Fintelligent Investor channel. I'm CA Pratiksha Pai. Welcome to yet another episode of our show, The Professional on Call Who Knows It All. Today, we have with us another esteemed professional for this show, CA Sujata Raguraman from Bangalore. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Pratiksha. I am very glad to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. You obliged to our request and made it to our show. Uh, ma'am, <clears throat> you have been in CA practice for 15 years. And uh, in this journey, you have also been a part of KSCA, which is the Karnataka State Chartered Accountants Association. And uh, not only have been a part of this organization, but you have also headed this organization throughout the way. Of course, you have handled various other posts also. And then finally, you have headed this organization. And uh, so now, uh, with all this diverse experience that you have, we have a good long conversation to have with you. Uh, so welcome to the show, ma'am. Uh, in your experience as a practicing chartered accountant for the past 15 years, you must have seen a lot of reforms happening in the Income Tax Act and in the GST law. We all have seen the birth of GST law, actually. And every day, some or the other new update is coming. So how are all these reforms and updates affecting the CA profession in your perspective, ma'am? Yeah, I would say we are, in the, we are at the right time and lucky to be part of a you know, 15 years journey. Uh, when I started my practice in the year 2009, from 2009 to 2024, if you see, there are major reforms in uh, indirect tax, which is GST. And in direct tax also, a lot of digitization has happened. Apart from that, there are changes in Companies Act 2013 was introduced. Right. So if I have to look at it from <clears throat> business perspective or as a CA, as a profession, uh, if I have to talk about the... Uh, direct tax, income tax for that matter first. When 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 I started my practice, that was the era where it was moving from offline, like you know, physical submission of ITRs to online submission, where in those times, Form 26 AS was just introduced. So there was a talk that the, the professional opportunities may come down. But if you look at it now, the day when I started my practice, though it is automated, where everything is getting auto-populated and government also says, you know, filing is going to be very simplified. It's a one-minute return. It started from one-page return to simplified return, online filing, and from today, auto-populated return, where you just have to click the button of submit. It just goes Absolutely. Through. Yeah. So, whereas, if you look at our opportunities, it has tremendously increased. So, that, that is where the opportunity lies, I would say. Because, Everywhere, there is a value add is required as a professional. Digitization might, must have happened, but still, as a professional, we need to see whether the data auto-populated is correct or not, whether it is yes. relevant for the SEC, what is the validity of that data, and also, more and above that, we need to give correct advice for the taxpayer, you know, in whatever form they need. So definitely it has increased our opportunities with respect to direct tax. So when I say, when I have to talk about uh, GST, I would say where there is a complexity, there is an opportunity. So that's how I look at it. The host of amendments, the changes in the law, I mean, it's tremendous. You cannot keep track of the changes that has happened over a period of time. To be specific, if I have to say in the recent times, from uh, July, August, there are about 23 notifications were issued. Just in July, yes. August. Yes, within a span of just uh, one week. And imagine after Finance Bill 2024, there are a lot more changes in the rules, forms. So it keeps us occupied all the time. So GST is very, very complex law. I wouldn't say it is easy. Definitely it is a complex right. law. If somebody wants to take up GST itself as a practicing area, you will not have time to do anything more. So that is the amount of uh, dedication and uh, 
you know the complexity the law demands if i have to say what are the kind of changes that has gone through in this 2017 because we start with all, always ease of doing business right Correct. start with simplified law whereas if you look at the amendments why is it amendments happening in the first place see when i did my article ship i majority of my uh, you know learnings were only in direct tax and i have not seen my seniors or my colleagues practicing in many areas they were restricting it to one or two areas they were very comfortable but in today's context if you see it is very difficult for you to practice in all the laws so with respect to gst when i say the amendments lot of amendments amendments whether it comes in the form of clarification like you know the taxpayer does not have clarity whether the you know the matter goes to the judiciary so judi judiciary comes out with certain clarifications you know certain decisions that has to be clarified through cbic so there are clarificatory changes and then second in the complaints what kind of forms whether there is you know changes in the forms why the changes in the forms again to simplify to simplify the ease of doing business to help the tax payer irony of it <laughs> yeah 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 so the in the form of simplification definitely there is clarity in the law the law is also evolving but at the same time as professionals the our work has enhanced Absolutely. definitely as a tax payer they will not be able to keep track of the amendments they will not be able to understand so they come to the professionals for having better clarity and uh, you know clarifying their ambiguity in their law so in the law so it's definitely i i feel that whatever reforms have happened in the recent times it's for the good good for the economy good for the tax payer at the same time good for the professionals also even if a professional takes a super niche category like very narrow category like only gst litigation still they can build an entire career out of it definitely definitely there is a lot there are a lot of scope for people who are into litigation <laughs> again that requires dedication it's not that yeah it requires a lot of study and study dedication lot yeah yeah yes so ma'am uh, in this same uh, flow of thought uh, going forward i want to take a slight detour now uh, as you know we have a lot of big ca firms which are multinational firms actually and our uh, prime minister also put forth a thought that we should also have indian firms which should become multinational firms in their own regard and this gave birth to an idea of big 10 wherein indian firms also get included in this so you have uh, served the profession uh, in the capacity of uh, your various titles in ksca any already you have served the profession in that manner so uh, what is your vision for the profession for the ca profession as such wherein uh, how can ca professionals uh, come together and build this big 10 yeah that is the dream of our i think uh, every bigger firm in bangalore or for that matter in india today so if you look at it uh, from the uh, you know process point of view what is what are the, i would call it as steps what are the steps which we have to uh, you know carry out to reach the big four level to call it as a big 10 of india's you know the india's big 10 so currently if you look at it why are we not able to reach up to that level why are we not able to call ourselves as big 10 though there are many firms why small firms you know where two partner firms or three partner firms cannot think in the angle of moving towards the global level form i will not call it as a big firm how do we make it global the thing is that the first first and foremost is that there should be shift in thinking first and foremost is that there should be shift in thinking thinking in the sense we have to come out of our traditional mindset where whoever joins in my firm okay whether as a professional or as an employee i will accept them as a employee not as a traditional article clerk okay so you give them the designation you give them the ownership make the things transparent you know so that they also feel that they are part of the growth of the firm or you call it as a company or call it as treat the firm as a company just come out of the mindset of proprietorship firm partnership firm okay that is step number 
Second is that we have to have some process if any employee joins, okay, whether he's joining as a CA or as a semi-qualified CA, everybody joins the organization, any organization or any company for that matter. They want to see their future from that company, right? Yes. Where will I reach five years from now? <clears throat> Where will I reach 10 years from now? So the company as a proprietor, you call yourself as a proprietor or a firm or as a CA firm, let me make it very generic, as a CA firm, it is our responsibility to no. ensure that we also set our own goals for our employees, for our own firm, so that they keep faith on us and work towards work towards the growth of our firm. And automatically, when the firm's growth happens, obviously, we all of us grow together. Third is that Collaboration is very important. As you rightly said, in today's context, if you want to practice in GST, it is very, it's impossible for you to focus on other areas. So just like how a company, how companies are able to grow, why not we see for that matter, even a person who is not qualified or graduates are able to take their company to 100 crore, 1000 crore level. Why not being a professional? Why can't we do that? Definitely it is possible. What is lacking is the mindset. So when I say mindset, we have to learn to collaborate with others. It need not be in the form of, you know, partnership. One CA on, wants to join with other CA. Okay. It can be on assignment basis or it can be on some hourly basis or it can be on project basis or number of days basis. Like, you know, it can be any form of collaboration. Now, because of uh, digitization, we can even work with the CA who's sitting in Ahmedabad, who's sitting in Tamil Nadu or sitting in Kerala, anywhere. Like, you know, what it needs is that mindset. So if you keep your mind open, you take up any opportunity, you stick on to what your, you know, inner calling, what your area of specialization is, stick on to that. Be the, you know, entrepreneur or head of the organization. Definitely things will fall in place. So these are all the small steps which, you know, we have to learn to adapt so that at some point, even the small firms, let us forget about two, num two partner firm or three partners firm, even a proprietor can also reach to the level of big yes. four you call, big ten you call, definitely it is achievable. So what you're saying is actually very interesting. You're saying that let us focus on our expertise and let us provide that expertise to other CA firms who may not have an expertise in such an area and let us collaborate with them and in return we can utilize their expertise in something where we are not really uh, specialized at. Exactly, exactly. Absolutely. So because when uh, we are having an expertise in uh, any one uh, sort of a area or a field, we may do better work in lesser time also. Exactly. <laughs> And that will also ensure that we can charge better. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is something that we all need to understand first. As you said, the mindset shift somewhere is uh, more required. And uh, one good thing we have is that definitely there are no geographical boundaries. As you mentioned, I can sit in Bangalore and uh, deal with a chartered accountant in Ahmedabad or Tamil Nadu or Madhya Pradesh. So absolutely, absolutely. That makes real good sense. And in this way, we can start at least a connection of chartered accountants throughout India. And then we can see how to give it a proper shape, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Very nice. Very nice. So Sujata, you have been involved with the KCA for many years in various titles. And uh, you have also held the pro uh, position of the president of KCA. And uh, in the history of organization, you became the first lady to hold uh, the president post and to head the organization. So while that is a very good thing, I don't know, maybe fortunately or unfortunately for so many years, why there wasn't any, any other woman uh, president. But definitely you made a start to it. And having uh, seen the journey, do you want to also... Um, put some light on what is, does gender roles matter? Is there an imbalance in the profession as a whole uh, in women versus men? Or what can we do to 
make a better balance between the gender roles because of course when we are talking about 5 trillion dollar economy 10 trillion dollar economy third largest economy definitely both the genders should be given a exact good push and both genders should be made proper use of the human resource and only then this goal also becomes achievable so what is your perspective on the gender roles in the profession yeah so let me address your first question first. So when I joined KSEA, I took the role of Women Empowerment Committee chairperson. I joined as a Women Empowerment Committee where you didn't believe at that point of time, you know, eight years ago, I knew only four women. I mean, you know, just four chartered accountants, I would say rather. It's not even four women, just four or five chartered accountants. But when I was given that role, I had no clue of how to go about. But thanks to my organization and my mentors and my past presidents, they really helped me a lot to connect with other members, network with other senior professional colleagues. So it helped me a lot to just bring in some kind of change in the organization. That is number one. Second, see, as a woman, we I wouldn't say that gender is something which we have to project as you know negatively or as a claim or as a, you know, people should be uh, given some preferential treatment, definitely no. Only one thing what I would definitely argue is that God has created differently that we have to accept. You cannot change the nature. Whatever men do, let us accept that there are certain things as women we cannot do. Okay, professionally, yes, definitely achievable, but there are certain things which we have to admit by nature we cannot do and mentally emotionally also there are challenges first is that acceptance once if you accept what's your you know uh, do's and which, which you can do capable of doing which are the things which you cannot do the conflict will not come the conflict will come in only when you try to prove that whatever you can do i will also do i never get into that conflict let me be very clear these are the things i am capable of doing See, there are so many things which you can't do, right? For anybody for that matter. If you ask me to climb the moon, yes, I will not be able to. So, let us not focus on the things which I can't. Let me focus on the things which I can. This is generic to even men. Okay, Absolutely. the list of I can't things. You cannot focus on I can't. You have to always focus on what I can. Right. So if you have that mindset, doesn't matter whether you are a woman or men the path becomes clear. So second, when it comes to interacting with, you know, male dominated, uh, you know, area or community, definitely in the initial stage, anywhere for that matter, there will be some resistance. Resistance in accepting your ideas, resistance in uh, making you to work on certain things, right? It will be there. It's all up to us, up to women, how far we are strong and commit and deliver so come what may whatever may be the judgment whatever may be the comments whatever may be the feedback we have to be strong in delivering what we promised once the confidence is I mean, set on us or people start believing then there is no question of gender bias or anything conflicts do come at any point of time okay if i have to talk about kca one of the biggest learnings which I would say is that conflict management, right? So That's we have to understand that when four minds meet, you will get six ideas. You have to live with it. You cannot say that, yes, my, my way is highway. That's not possible. You have to learn with the diverse opinion, people coming from different backgrounds, different ideas. Yes. How do we you know, take people along at the same time, put your ideas forward at the you know, interest of the best interest of the larger group and then execute it. That is what is all about. So if why this many years nobody has come, I would say people quit halfway. It is right. not that in KSEA, not many women have come forward. They have come up to some position like, you know, in office bearer post position also, there are five key roles. They come to some level and then they give up because of various reasons, probably they are not able to balance their family, professional career and the social activity. 
or because of their personal reasons. We don't know what, why. So when, I mean, with the blessings of God, fortunately, I did not have such other commitments, so I could pull on. So when I say women, why they are not able to, you know, continue or reach up to the top, one major reason what I see is that it is in our, you know, hand to ensure that our role should not be taken for granted for the sake of ornamentally, you know, taking it, you know, right. okay, you are a woman, I just don't need a woman, I need to fill up this place for a woman, so you are given. Let us not use that. Yeah. I am also capable, I happen to be a woman, I happen to be a woman, I am I'm, I'm confident that there are many women will follow, right? So that should be the trend, not for the sake of filling up, yes, there is a woman needed, yes, that post should be given. If that is given, I will be the first person to deny that. Absolutely, absolutely. What, whatever comes should come out for my merit or for my quality or for my efforts. Yes. If I happen to be a woman, yes, I'm happy. Right. So it's not that if KSE wanted, they could have ornamentally done that. I'm, I mean, with the due respect to my organization and my mentors and seniors, they have not done that. If they wanted, they could have done it. They have not done that. And due tests were, you know, put on me. It's not that I have also gone through just like that. Absolutely. There were challenges from my side also. I had to pass through certain things. Then only I got elevated. It was not that easy. Wow. Eight years I've served for KSC. So you mentioned, as you mentioned, eight years you served for the KCA. And uh, definitely in these eight years, you would have seen a lot of things. Uh, maybe in the profession, maybe in the institute, which needs uh, some sort of a change or some sort of an updation. So, uh, as we all know, you know, even uh, the CA Institute elections are also there in December. What is your vision for the institute as a whole? Because every day is a day of updation and change nowadays. It is so dynamic. What is your vision for the institute as a whole? See, for that matter, if you say in, uh, we are living in the uh, world of plentiness, like you know, abundance, I would say. Whatever you take, everything is available in abundance. Abundance is also a problem. You know, I think scarcity is good, I feel. Yeah. So when you have in abundance, mm -hmm. if you take GST update or anything, you plenty of videos. If you want to learn GST, plenty of videos. If you ask anybody what is the area you want to get in, Everybody list not one or two, at least five or six areas of specialization. Like, you know, you can get into forensic audit, you can get into valuation, you get into IBC, you get into, Absolutely. you know, TST, you get into, uh, uh, you know, litigation practice. So we are living in the world of abundance, problem of abundance. So it's for us to choose what suits us, suits us. What is good for me? What am I good at? So it's time for us to recraft yourself. That was my, in fact, uh, uh, you know, intention also. You may be good at everything, but you need to know what you are extremely good at. Oh, okay. So if that being the case, it's time for us to introspect and spend some time on what you are good at, how you can shape your future. If you decide and work on it, I'm telling you the opportunities and growth is definitely it's limitless uh, limitless i would say limitless absolutely so as from the institute point of view if you ask me currently yes there are a lot of courses are happening what we lack is some kind of mentorship mentorship in the sense guidance there are so many women who have taken break in their career okay if they come and approach me like you know how do i go about what do i do the one thing what i tell them is that if you want to do for like, you know, time filling or, you know, uh, keep yourself engaged, then don't choose practice as your option. Practice is not your time filling activity or part time activity. Practice Absolutely. I was just coming to that as well. Uh, yeah. You have mentioned you have been in the Women Empowerment Committee as well as you mentioned that even women in leadership roles also sometimes quit for a lot of reasons. So it is actually a, a, a high statistic of women 
who kind of you know quit during the time of marriage or child birth it is always the woman who has to choose between family or work etc and yes what you will rightly mention sometimes women especially chartered accountant women feel that let me start a practice maybe it will be very easy and i can get in and out of office whenever i want but the reality is that practice is also as challenging or i need to say more challenging than employment so uh, yes what is your perspective on that issue as a whole yeah definitely practice is even uh, tougher than employment i would say because at least in employment you have two days of holiday three days of holiday like you have a you know one mail notification saying out of office on vacation for four days five days here nobody is interested whether you are in like whether you are on vacation or you are on medical emergency for the clients you have engaged on something so you have to deliver whether you deliver it or your team delivers it's left to you so from day one when you have decided to practice what you have to develop is that create layers of leaders like you know below you there should be somebody there should be delegation of work should happen so never think practice as self employment you know self employment in the sense okay i am given 4 hours of work i will do 4 hours that's enough for me that's not how practice works once when you get into practice every day is a new problem right when one client will come with the problem you will never know again when will the same problem will get repeated the second client will come out with the second problem so you will start doing your research on that you will never know when that will again get repeated so this is how you start exploring so because of which you know you will end up spending more time you will become a specialist so you need to have multiple layers in your office or wherever you are working and beyond the point what you have to develop is a leadership quality okay that is a now time like you know when you asked about institute vision luckily we have learned operations management we have learned financial management we have learned corporate law income tax law everything you know for that matter not only taxation we know all the subjects so it is for us it's a right time for us to put everything into action gone are those days where i will end up my life you know i will end my life as a proprietor and live as a proprietor it is time for us to collaborate and create layers of next generation of people so for that what we have to uh, you know learn is the art of delegation conflict management working with the team so soft skills these are the skills which we have to acquire probably we may need to attend six months course even i would say uh, there was a mdp course in conducted by icia which was extremely good we call it as shadow boarding where in the board room where even youngsters young members so if i have to give you an example i learn we look up or pivot table from my junior who's just right, 18 right. year old boy right, yeah, right. So at the same time when i want to do for any litigation i go to my senior who's 80 years old so it is for us to have the mix of these two extremes if we really want to be in practice successful right. to be in practice this is the combo which we need to have so probably from institute angle if i have to say what we need is networking and mentorship is definitely these two things are missing and from professionals uh, point of view what we have to there are a lot of skills which we have to learn okay what we have studied and uh, you know those curriculum is perfectly fine but when it when it comes to practice negotiation is a skill soft skill absolutely how do you negotiate with the client <clears throat> how do you mitigate your client i mean risk with your client that's yes. a lot which we have i mean no curriculum can teach all these absolutely, things absolutely absolutely and when we are uh, negotiating skills i think the best person from whom we can learn is from our clients because exactly. they are entrepreneurs they do that every day maybe in their business so definitely you know he, there is something to learn from from clients as well exactly <laughs> so every day is a learning probably uh, from institute perspective as a professional we may have to work on the skill set what are the skill set i have to improve and second networking what kind of networking i have to do to 
you know enhance my business because gone are those business ca profession is slowly turning into from uh, a pure profession to slightly you know business business in the sense now we are working as a consultant business yeah. consultant so when you say you are a business consultant you need to have business acumen you need to have the those kind of certain skills you should be able to look at the uh, you know businessman not from the balance sheet angle or from number perspective but from the business angle right so unless and uh, until you assume certain roles assume yourself take up that role it is difficult for you to you cannot wear the hat of a chartered accountant and say that yes i will be a look into your numbers after the end of the financial year right so and i think somewhere uh, the professional somewhere you know uh, the meaning of networking and collaboration some people may feel that if we are in a whatsapp group that is enough networking <laughs> but we'll be in a whatsapp group and we'll be silent that is also not networking right exactly we may have to motivate them to become more show, show out their voices more exactly so raising voice at the right time for the right cause is very very important and to uh, you know grab the global opportunities we need to learn the culture of other countries correct so cross border transactions how do how does that culture of that country for that matter right from sending mails right from negotiation right from deliverables you know every country has a certain culture and pattern so it is just not restricted to our own indian uh, clients but taking them you know serving clients abroad has become the norm of the day maybe over a period of time it will become norm of the year norm of the day so if that being the case what are the skill set which we have to acquire so this is one thing which i would feel that you know which i feel that institute has to uh, you know imbibe yeah imbibe yeah or you know uh, disseminate for our members right. right yeah that knowledge sharing should happen from either from institute side or from other professional body side or even as professionals we can learn nowadays there are a lot of platforms online platforms are there these are the skill sets which we have to acquire absolutely so that that's been a great pleasure knowing your thoughts on uh, various aspects it was a very short conversation but we covered so much we talked about gender roles we talked about ksca we talked about big 10 and we also talked about the challenges that our profession is facing day in and day out and we also got to know about uh, what are your visions uh, for the institute and for the profession as a whole and uh, Uh, we thank you so much ma'am for uh, being on our show and dear viewers if you found this video useful please like it and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel and uh, thank you for being with us till here thank you goodbye thank you pratiksha thank you